Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Bible study with Pastor Bowens. This week's announcements are as follows. Calling all parents and students, the FBC Outreach Ministry's annual Back to School drive through event is on its way. It will be held Saturday, July 24, 2021 from 1.30 to 3 p.m. There you will find school supplies and care packages. Masks are required and we look forward to seeing you come out, stock up on the school supplies and get ready to have a great school year. See you then. Hot Off the Press is the July edition of the Friendship Voice newsletter. The theme for this month is forgiveness. Articles in this edition include recognizing the class of 2021 high school and college graduates and meet Linda Davis. And if you would like to submit an article or a photograph for the next newsletter, please contact Paulette Tap with the information provided on your screen. And remember, reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. So get out there and read, folks. God bless. Ladies of FBC, are you looking to grow in your walk with the Lord as a mighty woman of God? Do you miss the fellowship with your fellow sisters in Christ? Well, don't delay. Come join us. The Women's Ministry is waiting for you. We meet on the second Saturday of every month via Zoom. Intercessory prayer starts promptly at 8.30 a.m. and the fellowship begins at 9 a.m. Come worship with us as we seek the Lord and go after him with all of our heart. We are excited for all that God is doing. Our theme for this year is we're all in. If you have any questions, please contact Minister Monique Stroman at 678-357-8282. We hope to see you there. Be blessed. If you're looking for ways to stock your pantry and stuff your refrigerators, the FBC Outreach Ministry is here to help during these challenging times. Please drive on through on Fridays from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. to get free groceries, meat, produce, dairy, desserts, snacks, you name it. First come, first serve at Friendship Baptist Church. Be blessed. Calling all youth. Youth Sunday School convenes every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. Please go to our website at fbcdeluth.org and click on Online Youth Sunday School. Come fellowship and gain a much deeper understanding of God's Word so you can apply these scriptural truths to your everyday life. Be blessed! Youth and teens, we didn't forget about you. We have a worship service dedicated just for you. To join us, please visit our church's website with the link that's located on your screen. And come on and turn up for Jesus with us. Please join us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for prayer and devotion, led by the FBC Mothers Ministry. The Zoom link can be accessed from the church's website. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless. If you're in need of a Sunday school class, FBC has a class just for you. The adult online Sunday school convenes every Sunday at 9.45 a.m. Zoom links can be found at the church's website at fbcdeluth.org. And there you can find a class that best suits your needs, such as the women's class, marriage class, men's class, connect young adult class, and living single for Christ. If you're in need of a book, Sunday school books are available in the church office Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We look forward to seeing you in class. It's Giving Time Church, and we have cheerful ways to give. You can give online via credit or debit card at our secure website at fbcdeluth.org, or you can mail your gifts to FBC to P.O. Box 604, Duluth, Georgia 30096. Or if you like to use your phone, you can text your gifts by texting FBC Duluth to 73256. For God loveth a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Be blessed. COVID-19 vaccine information. Please make an appointment by either phone by calling 800-456-0186 or online with the website provided on your screen or by walk-up, limited availability. At these locations, Gwinnett Place Mall, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Georgia Piedmont Technical College, Newton Campus, Monday through Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Springfield Baptist Church, Thursday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Please be safe and govern yourselves accordingly. Well, good evening to you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another Bible study. Good to be with you on tonight. Hope and pray that everybody had a blessed fourth and that you enjoyed your family and ate real good and, and ready to get back into the Word of God. Amen. 
But let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll jump right into our study for tonight. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, we do come again to the throne of grace to say thank you. Thank you for this another day that you have blessed us to see. Thank you for all the blessings that you have so generously and graciously bestowed upon us. Lord, for life, health, and strength, every way being as well with us as they are right now. We do ask that you forgive us of all sins that we have committed against you, O God, knowing and unknowing. Create within us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us, O Heavenly Father, that we might be your children and be better children of the Most High God. We love you tonight, Lord, and we surrender to you, Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, have your way. Not our will, but thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Uh, tonight, my brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking at Psalms number 41. Psalms 41. Amen. In Psalms 41, it has 13 verses. Amen. And I was reading this psalm some time ago, and... Uh, uh, there are some things in here that, uh, that, that uh, David was going through that, that caught my attention. Amen. And I thought this would be a great study for us. And it's, it's about David seeking God's mercy in times of adversity. It's seeking God's mercy in times of adversity. My brothers and sisters, I don't care how saved you are. And how long you've been saved. There will be times you will suffer some adversities in your life. Amen. You will suffer, amen, some setbacks. You will suffer some sickness. You will suffer some pain. Amen. Some kind of setback in your life. Amen. But, but, but during those times, we got someone who can help us. Someone who can heal us. Someone who can deliver us. And we have to learn, amen, to lean and depend on him. So we want to start here in Psalms number 41. We're not going to be able to finish this, this, this study tonight. So it'll probably come to us in two parts. Now, let's read Psalms 41, verses 1 through 13, amen, together. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of his languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Amen. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Mm, 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 mm. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, mm, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat my bread, have lifted up his heel against me. Verse 10, but thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requeat them. By this, I know that thou favorest me because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity and setteth me before thy face forever. And then verse 13, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. Amen. Now again, seeking God's mercy 
in times of adversity. Amen. Now, when we say the word cancer, the mere mention of this ugly word strikes fear in our hearts. Amen. But it's not the only word with terror-inducing power. Think about the words heart attack, stroke, AIDS, multiple sclerosis, malaria, amen, tuberculosis, amen, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, amen, uh, meningitis, coronavirus. When you think about these words and others, they remind us that our sin-cursed world abounds with illnesses that threaten and often claim human lives. Amen. While we are blessed, my brothers and sisters, to live in a time when God is progressively giving us more knowledge, amen, to treat and to cure these conditions, we are powerless to eradicate disease and suffering. Amen. So ultimately, our destiny rests in God's hand. Amen. Our destiny rests in God's hand. And I'm glad about that. I am so glad that our destiny does not rest in the hands of man, but our destiny rests in God's hand. Now, David penned Psalm 41 when he was suffering from a life-threatening illness. Amen. Some type of disease, some type of sickness. Amen. From his sickbed, David teaches us what to do when we are plagued with an illness or a grave illness or, or, or when we face other serious adversities beyond our control. Amen. We should cry out to God for mercy. Amen. This is what David is teaching us. We should cry out to God amen, for mercy. Now, as much as any medical treatment, we need God's mercy. Let me say it again. As much as any medical treatment we may need or think we need, we need God's mercy. Amen. Now, God possesses all power, and he alone, amen, can help us. He alone, amen, can heal us. He alone can restore us. Amen. And so we have to seek his mercy. Amen. Now, speaking about his mercy, this is what verses 1 through 3 of this text uh, is teaching us. It teaches us that God will show mercy. And, amen. And God will be merciful to you if you've been merciful to others. Amen. God will show mercy. And God will be merciful to you if you have been merciful to others. Let's look at verses 1 through 3 again. It says, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. Amen. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. You see, when you have considered or taken care of the poor, the poor talks about those who are helpless Amen. When you have helped those who could not help themselves, then God will help you Then, in your day of adversity, in your day of trouble. And verse 2 says, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. Amen. And thou will not deliver him into or unto the will of his enemies. Amen. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Amen. So we learn in these verses that God will show mercy and God will be merciful to us if we have been merciful to others. Now, as David lay suffering on his sickbed, the Lord put this powerful truth into David's heart, in his spirit, or in his soul. And that truth was, he will be merciful to those who are merciful to others. Amen. Now, we even learn this in Matthew chapter 5, in verse 7. 
Now, if you notice in verse number one, it speaks of the poor. Amen. If you see that word poor, it refers to those who are weak and helpless, those who are sick, amen, and cannot help themselves, amen. Perhaps David was thinking of those people who nursed him during his illness, amen. Now, as he reflected on, uh, on their selfless, gentle care, David realized that God will bless those who care or consider the sick as well as those who minister to the weak and the helpless. Amen. See, when you have, when you have ministered to, to others, when you have cared for others, amen, when you have taken care of others, amen, when you have been a caretaker, amen, God will take care of you, amen. This is what this, this is what David is, is is teaching us here in these verses. Now, uh, uh, when you have been helpful to others, Amen. During that time of sickness, God will deliver you, Amen. Through your troubles, through your trials, Amen. We see that in verse number one, Amen. Blessed is he that considereth the poor; the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Do you see that? Yeah, you see, under God's watchful eye, we reap, my brothers and sisters, what we sow. Under God's watchful eye, we reap what we sow. Therefore, when we help others who are in need, the Lord promises to come to our aid when we are struggling, when we are suffering, when we are going through. Amen. Note that this is a conditional promise. This promise is based on a condition, amen. And the condition is if you have given out help, if you have given out assistance, if you have given out care, amen, then this will be returned to you. See, God's blessings are not automatically bestowed on his people, amen. The Father in heaven looks for those who wisely conform to his heavenly kingdom, watch this, on earth, amen. Those who are righteous, those who are holy, those who uh, operate in love, those who operate in justice, and those who, 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 who allows uh, uh, these, 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 these kingdom blessings, amen, to flow from them to others, amen. You see, God cares, amen, for the oppressed. He cares for the poor. He cares for the needy, for those who cannot help themselves. And he delights to see his children concerned with those who are in need because this is his concern. And every father, amen, would want his children, amen, to follow in his footsteps. Amen. So God is, is a caring God, and he wants us to be caring children. Amen. And so when we care for others, amen, God in turn cares for us. So he will deliver us in our troubles because we have been, amen, taking care of those who are in need. In verses 2 and 3, amen, we see that God will shower his mercy on you. Amen. When you have been merciful. Amen. He will shower his mercy on you when you have been merciful. Amen. Look at verses two and three again. It says the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. Now watch this. This is when you you you, you go through your sick time. You go through your struggle. It says God will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Amen. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Lord will shower you. Amen. With his blessings, with his mercy. Amen. When your day of struggle, your day of sickness come because that's what you've done toward others. Now, on some days, 
during his illness, David questioned if he would recover. Amen. And I think uh, 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 we all do that sometimes uh, when, we, when we're sick and when we're really, really sick. We wonder. Amen. And, and, and even question if we're going to get well. But David's anxious heart was encouraged by God's promises to help those who help others. Amen. Now, throughout David's life, amen, he showed mercy to many people. Amen. He really did. Uh, his kindness to Saul's crippled grandson, Mephibosheth. Amen. Is one of the examples of amen, of his compassionate heart. And you can read about that in 2 Samuel chapter 9. You can read about how David had compassion, amen, on Mephibosheth, amen, took him in, amen, uh, 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 and, 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 and treated him like he was his own son, amen. Now, God's spirit brought peace to David's spirit, his troubled spirit, Amen. By assuring him of five ways the Lord would reward him for his love, for his charity towards others. Amen. And the first was the Lord would preserve him and keep him alive. You see that in verse 2. He says the Lord will deliver him in times of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. You see that? This was one, amen, of the rewards that, that, that God would give to David, amen, because David, amen, had been a blessing to others, amen. Uh, 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 and and this, is, this is what God promised David in these verses, amen. Uh, the second thing, uh, assurance that, that, that David would receive from the Lord he would continue to enjoy the blessings of living in the land. Even though he was on his sickbed, the Lord promised that he would continue to draw, enjoy the blessing of living in the land. You see that in verse 2. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. Here it is. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. Amen. He would continue to live in the land. He would not die. Amen. And the third assurance that the Lord, amen, would, 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 would not uh, 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 give David over to the will of his enemy, amen. The third assurance was that the Lord would not give David over to his enemies. You see that? Amen. In verse number two also, where it says, and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. You see, David's foes, his enemies, rejoiced while he suffered. Lord have mercy. They were hoping that the seriousness of his illness would claim David's life. Amen. Now, the thought of their evil desire being fulfilled was more than David could bear. Amen. But God assured David that he amen, uh, uh, would keep him alive and that they would not, amen, be able to celebrate, amen, his death because he would live on. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. That was the third thing, that, 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 that God would not deliver David over to the will of his enemies. And the fourth thing was the Lord would strengthen or sustain David throughout his illness. You see that in verse number three. It says, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of his languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, the fourth thing, the Lord will strengthen or sustain David throughout his illness. Amen. He would keep David alive. David would not die. Amen. My brothers and sisters, when our burdens are at their heaviest, God's grace is at its strongest. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. When our burdens are at, amen, 
their heaviest. Uh, God's grace is at its strongest. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. The Lord assured David that his grace would be sufficient, amen, to carry him through all of his suffering, through all of his sickness, amen, that he would not die. That was the reassurance that God gave him, the, the fourth reassurance that God gave him, uh, that he would strengthen him, that he would sustain him through his illness, amen. And the fifth thing that God assured David of was that he would restore him to health. He would restore David to health. You see that in verse three. So the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Praise his holy name. So God promised David. He assured David that he would restore him to health. He said, we'll make, amen, uh, all his bed in sickness, amen, in his sickness, amen. Now, the words we'll make means to change or overturn, to change or overturn. Uh, the Lord was going to overturn David's sickbed and heal him. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. He was going, amen, to get David up out of that bed. Amen. David would not be an invalid. Amen. Uh, he would not suffer any lasting handicaps. Amen. From his sickness. Amen. He was going, the Lord was going to totally heal David. Amen. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. God had gave David some blessed assurances. Amen. Amen. Now, again and again, uh, throughout his word, God promises to help us if we help others. Amen. All throughout his word, he, he teaches us that. If we help others, he helps us. Amen. The greatest in the kingdom of God are those, watch this, who serve others. Amen. Amen. The greatest in the kingdom of God are those who serve others. Now, as God has, has, has exalted Jesus, amen, who humbled himself and came to our aid by going to the cross and dying for our sins, so will he exalt us when we minister to the weak and the helpless. Amen. Amen. You see, when you go out and you give your life in, in service to help others, then God, amen, will minister to you. Amen. We are never more like Christ, my brothers and sisters, than when we stoop to help someone in need. When we give of ourselves, when we give of our service, when we give of our time, our talents, and our treasures to be a help to others, we're never more like Christ as to when we're giving like that, giving of ourselves like that. Amen. Matthew 5 and 7, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen. And notice what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 40. These are the words of the Lord. He says, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. Amen. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in naked and ye clothed me. Amen. I was sick and ye visited me. Hmm? I was in prison and ye came unto me. Amen. Then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. 
Lord have mercy. Amen. You see, my brothers and sisters, when we serve others, amen, we're really serving God. Amen. When we minister to others, we are really ministering to God. Amen. And God is taking note of our service. Amen. Amen. Now, in verses 4 through 9, David prays for mercy. He prays for the forgiveness of God. Amen. Verses 4 through 9, he prays for mercy. He prays for the forgiveness of God. Amen. And this is what we do in seeking God's mercy in times of adversity. Amen. We pray for mercy. Amen. We pray for forgiveness. And this is what David is teaching, teaching us. Let's, let's read verses 4 through 9. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. Lord have mercy. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise. Amen. My hurt. And evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, have lifted up his heel against me. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So David is praying for mercy. And he's asking God for forgiveness. Amen. And there's a time when we need to pray for mercy, my brothers and sisters. Now, David's sickness was only the beginning of his problems. Let me say that again. David's sickness was only the beginning of his problems. You see, his enemies were using his situation to gain an advantage over him. Amen. Even worse than this, a close friend of David had betrayed him and joined forces with his enemies. Lord have mercy. So David needed God's mercy. Amen. He needed God's healing and his help in overcoming those who sought to do him harm, to do him in. Amen. Now, be merciful or have mercy means to pity someone who is uh, in distress and stoop down to aid them. Lord have mercy. Uh, David was helplessly confined to his bed. And so the only thing that David could really do was call on the name of the Lord and ask him for mercy. Amen. For the same mercy that he had shown, amen, to others. You see, David had been a merciful man. He had shown mercy to others. And now he could call on the Lord and ask him for mercy. Amen. David prayed for spiritual as well as physical healing. Amen. He prayed for spiritual as well as physical healing. He believed that his sickness was God's chastening for some sin he had committed in his life. Therefore, he confessed his sin, amen, to the Lord. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. He prayed for the restoration, watch this, of his soul. He prayed for the restoration of his entire being. Amen. Now, before he could expect God to heal his body, he knew that he first needed to deal with the sin that was in his life. My brothers and sisters, what a lesson this is for us. Amen. Before we can ask God to heal our bodies, we have to ask God to have mercy upon us and forgive us for the sin that we've committed in our life. Amen. We got to get that problem fixed first. Amen. That sin problem. Now, once David repented of his sin, 
Amen. God will spiritually restore him and hopefully heal his body. Amen. This was, amen, David's plan. Amen. To confess his sin, to get, to get that, that sin problem taken care of, and then God, amen, could be merciful and even heal his body. Amen. Now, David needed mercy. Mm -hmm. And you need mercy, my brothers and sisters, when uh, your friend become your enemy. When your friends become your enemies. And we see this in verses 5 through 8. David's so-called friends were becoming his enemies. Look at verse 5. He says, many speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. And evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Lord have mercy. This is what they were saying about David. His friends were becoming his enemies. David's spirit was crushed by unfaithful friends who were predicting, watch this, amen, his death. They were pretending to be concerned about David, uh, but they actually hoped that he would die and his kingdom would end. Lord have mercy. These hypocrites, my brothers and sisters, would visit David. They would offer words of sympathy, offer words of encouragement. You see this in verse number six. But their motives, amen, were false. Amen. They actually came together inside information about David's condition which they wickedly, watch this, spread it, amen, throughout the kingdom, amen. They came in there pretending, to, pretending to, to be concerned about David, but what they was coming for was information so that they can go out, amen, and spread it throughout the kingdom, amen. As they gossiped among themselves, David's enemy imagined the worst. They were hoping and predicting that his sickness would prove fatal, that David would not bounce back, amen, that David would not be healed, amen, but that David would die on his sickbed. Lord have mercy. Yeah, so David needed mercy, and that's why he was praying and asking God for mercy. You need mercy also when your very best friend turns against you. And this is what happened to David in verse number nine. His best friend, one of his best friends, turned against him. Notice verse nine. He says, Yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, have lifted up his heels against me. My, my, my. Wow. David needed the mercy of God because his own friend, his familiar friend, the one who he's been to David's house time after time after time, have eaten many meals with David, but have kicked up his heels against David. Lord have mercy. Hmm. Yeah. As if the actions of his enemies were not discouraging enough. Watch this. One of David's closest friends betrayed him and wished that David would die. Mm -mm -mm. Now, assuming that the setting of this psalm is speaking about Absalom's betrayal, David's son, Absalom's betrayal, then the traitor that David is talking about is his, 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 his 
familiar friend would have been Ahithophel, David's chief advisor. Amen. David had really trusted Ahithophel. Amen. Without reservation. Amen. He had really put a lot of confidence in this man. And now this man have joined forces with David's enemy and turned against him. So David really needed the mercy of God. He needed God's help. Amen. Now, three situations in David's life prompt him to cry out for God's mercy. Amen. These are occasions, my brothers and sisters, we also need the Lord's help in our own life. Amen. First of all, uh, when we have sinned and God is chastening us, we need his mercy. Amen. Uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. God has promised, amen, to forgive us. Amen. And when God forgives us, what he's doing is showing us mercy. Amen. That's what he's doing. He is being merciful to us. Amen. So when we have sinned and God is chasing us, we need his mercy. Amen. And we need to cry out for his mercy. And then we need to confess our sins so that God will forgive us. Amen. Secondly, we, when we are overwhelmed, by trouble and trials in our lives, we need the mercy of God. Let me say that again. When we are overwhelmed by the troubles and trials in our lives, we need the mercy of God. When we are enduring trials, watch this. It often seems that other problems come up. When we're already going through something, amen, oftentimes it seems that other problems develop, other problems arise, Lord have mercy. Now, heaping problems on top of problems is one of Satan's uh, uh, chiefest strategies to defeat us, amen. Uh, piling problems on top of problems on top of problems is one of the devil's strategy, amen, in defeating us, amen. And that's why we sometimes say if it ain't one thing, it's another thing. If it ain't this, is that. I take two steps forward, I end up taking four steps backwards, amen, because it's always something. And it seems like when one problem comes, then here come another, another, and another. Now, as we see in this passage, the devil, amen, implored this strategy against David by influencing his friends to betray him while he was suffering some illness or some injury and battling for his life. I mean, he's already sick, amen. Now his son is trying to overtake the kingdom, his friend. Amen. His familiar friend has betrayed him and joined forces with his enemies. You see how he's piling one thing on top of the other? Amen. Uh, the devil also utilized this strategy against Job by arranging a series of rapidly occurring problems that inflicted unimaginable pain in Job's life. Amen. Before one uh, 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 of Job's servants could, could, could finish telling what had happened, uh, what had badly had happened, uh, another one was coming, amen, with some more bad news. And this happened, amen, continually, amen, until Job's, all of Job's children were dead. But this is how the devil will strategize. This is how he will, he will attack us. Uh, if he can't get us one way, he will certainly, amen, keep trying to get us another way. And on and on and on and on and on. Amen. Now, when we are doing our best for the Lord, amen, striving to live godly, striving to serve him, we should expect Satan to attack. Amen. 
when we're doing the Lord's work and we're striving to serve him, trying to do our best in service, amen, we, we, should, we should not think, amen, that the devil will not attack us. But those are the times that he real attack us. Amen. And like David, in such times, we need to turn to the Lord for help. We need to turn to the Lord and cry out for mercy. Amen. We need God's strength to sustain us. Amen. We need his power to overcome our enemy. Amen. That's why he tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, God has given us everything we need, my brothers and sisters, to resist Satan and his evil forces. Amen. We must realize that Satan, not the people who do the evil against us, is our real enemy. Satan is a real enemy. Amen. Not the people that he uses. Amen. Amen. They're under his influence. Amen. But Satan is the one that's behind the whole thing. Amen. That's the one we need to get angry with. Amen. That's the one we need to fight right there. Now, we have been equipped, my brothers and sisters, with the armor of God to protect us and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's holy word, to smite the enemy. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 and sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we're going to have to learn that word and fight with the word of God. Amen. God's indwelling spirit is far more powerful than Satan and all of his imps. Amen. That's why we have to put on the whole armor now. Now, through him, through the spirit of God, we can overcome everyone and everything that rises up against us. Amen. The word of God says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen. Now, when we are too weak to fight for ourselves, as David was, the Lord will fight for us if we cry out, as David did, for mercy. Lord, have mercy upon me. I am weak, but thou art strong. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Uh, we should always call on him when trouble mounts up against us. Now, the third thing is... Uh, uh, when, when, when someone we love turn against us, we shall not need the mercy of God. We need the help of God. When someone we love turns against us, the stabbing pain of betrayal aches like nothing else in life. When you have been stabbed by someone you love, all oh, that hurts like nothing else. Nothing uh, uh, hurts worse than wounds inflicted by an abusive parent. Amen. Uh, nothing uh, affects us more painfully, amen, like an unfaithful spouse. Mm -hmm. Nothing hurts worse than wounds inflicted by a rebellious child, a je jealous sibling, a, 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 a disloyal friend, amen, <laughs> or ambitious co-worker, amen. All of these things hurt us tremendously, amen, and, 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 and they're not easy to rebound from, not easy to rebound from, and so, 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 so we need the Lord's mercy, we need the Lord, we need the Lord's grace, Amen. We need the Lord's help, amen, to forgive those who betray us and to heal us from the hurt of that treachery, amen. We can take great comfort, my brothers and sisters, in the fact that Jesus knows how it feels to be betrayed by a trusting friend. Let me say that again. Jesus knows how it feels to be betrayed by a trusting friend. You see, our great priest, who knows all about our infirmities, amen, waits to bestow his grace and his mercy upon us when we are hurting. For we have not a high priest, amen, which cannot be uh, 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 tempted, amen. Uh, 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 he 
he knows every pain. He, he, he knows every ache. He knows every problem that we encounter. Therefore, we are encouraged to boldly ask for help, to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might see, receive help in our day of trouble. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, guess what? We have run out of time. Amen. So we have to bring our lesson to a close right here. And we'll have to pick up on the, the remaining verses. Amen. Next week. Amen. We'll have to pick up on, amen, the remaining verses next week. Amen. We'll have to pick up on um, verses uh, uh, 10, 11, 12, and 13 on next week. So until next week, God bless you, God keep you, and may heaven continue to shine down upon you and be favorable towards you. In Jesus' name, amen. For more information about Pastor Bowens, church leaders, the bulletin, the newsletter, resources, and announcements, please visit our website at www.fbcduluth.org. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you were blessed by the service. We look forward to having you join us again. Have a blessed week.